Hello, uh, good afternoon good, or good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is Scott Silverman. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Commerce Next. We're a community and conference for digital retailers. And welcome to uh, webinar number four uh, on uh, me tailoring messaging in the wake of COVID-19. Um, I wanna thank everyone for tuning in today and making time to join or listen to the replay. Uh, I have a few important thank yous before we get started. Uh, first, uh, I wanna thank our speakers today, uh, Bill Schneider, who is VP of Product Marketing at Sheer ID, Kathy Thomas, who's Chief Strategy Officer at Half Price Books, and Leslie Berthy, uh, VP of Marketing at FabFitFun. Uh, unfortunately, Matt Kness from Lucky Brand had an emergency meeting um, and had to uh, cancel at the last minute. Uh, so we also want to give a big thank you to the digital retailers that continue participating in Commerce Next uh, merchant surveys. Uh, these are providing really valuable information. Um, what's unique is that where you can provide a um, point of view from the merchant's perspective. Um, and we hope that uh, you're patient with us sending out the uh, request to fill out the survey. And uh, again, we're really grateful uh, for everyone doing that. And finally, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Sheer ID, uh, for supporting our webinar today. And we're gonna be hearing Bill uh, Schneider from Sheer ID in a little bit, who has some fresh research uh, that he's gonna share. So the agenda for today, uh, I just have a couple housekeeping notes. Uh, then I wanna share some top line results from the newest Commerce Next survey, um, a couple relevant data points from uh, previous Commerce Next surveys. Uh, we'll hear Bill's research. Uh, we have some uh, live polls from the audience and then we'll have a panel discussion. So uh, as far as the housekeeping notes, uh, please, uh, don't worry about missing anything. Uh, this is being recorded and it'll be available for replay uh, by tomorrow. And I just wanna show you a couple things that are on your screen so you don't miss anything during the webinar. So uh, if you look on the upper right, you'll see uh, Q&A, polls, handouts. Um, these are kind of the key areas you wanna focus in on. Um, on the if you want to ask a question at any time, uh, just enter it in uh, there. Uh, and there's also, uh, we'll be doing the polls and we'll show you a little bit more about uh, the polls as we're going through. And then uh, last, a lot of people ask uh, for the handouts. If you want to download the slides, again, if you look in that upper right, there's a handouts uh, button there, just click on that and you can download the, uh, the handout in the, in the deck from today. And then finally, for those that are listening on the replay on the bottom right, there's a button there where you can see uh, both the handouts and uh, the results of the of the live polls that we do. Uh, so uh, we uh, were in the field with Commerce Next Merchant Surveys on Monday and Tuesday of this week. So this is very fresh and we're hearing a little bit of good news. So this is the question was, uh, what's your e-commerce revenue? Uh, how's it relative to plan uh, between for the two-week period, March 29th to April 11th? And I believe this is the first time where we've seen ahead of plan uh, outpacing those that were um, below plan. Um, and this is across 113 uh, merchants that, um, that answered this question. Um, and then we had one other question that I wanted to point out, um, and this was just a general sense of optimism compared to the last week. Um, this is the first time we asked this question in the survey, but it was nice to see that uh, definitely the, the, you know, there's a lot of folks that are feeling about the same, um, but certainly those that are more optimistic are outnumbering those that are, uh, not, are, that are less optimistic. So, uh, it's good to see uh, see some of a little bit of good news. Um, this is our one extra bonus. The I'm calling this the non -ta not tax day research bonus. Uh, in our first webinar, we included some consumer data from Bizrate Insights, and we have since uh, had some conversations with them, and they're willing to uh, field 
consumer questions on our behalf and we love to crowdsource ideas. What do you want to ask consumers? Uh, what are they thinking about? What are they, how are they feeling? So if you have any questions, send me an email, scott at commercenext.com um, with any suggestions that you have and we will take a look at everything that comes in um, and hopefully we'll be able to field some of those and have the results of those uh, available to you in future webinars and on the Commerce Next blog. So uh, jumping into today's topic uh, around the importance of messaging, I just wanted to provide a very high level view of uh, our way of thinking about this in that, um, you know, the brands that uh, came out of the 2008 financial crisis the most quickly, in fact, nine times faster, were the strongest brands coming in. And certainly messaging is a big part of that. And that's a part of why we wanted to have this webinar on this topic, because it is so important. Messaging is obviously changing. This was from a survey we did uh, a few weeks ago, and we were asking about really the tone. And as you can see, there's a lot of adjusting to sympathy and compassion, but there's also uh, merchants and, and retailers that are focused on adjusting message to position themselves as escape or entertainment. Uh, there's opportunities to talk about some charitable tie-ins uh, and, and certainly uh, promotions, which I think if we were to ask this question today, that those numbers would probably even be higher as we're seeing the promotional environment uh, you know, uh, increase a bit. Um, we also did one of our live polls that I thought I would bring back. And just for a point of reference around email frequency, uh, this was done on April 4th uh, webinar, uh, where about half of the retailers were decreasing their frequency and about a third were increasing their frequency. And it's gonna vary from brand to brand. And then finally, just want to remind everyone of this very kind of heartening trend that we're seeing uh, and, and certainly a good opportunity to do some messaging is how so many uh, retailers and brands are leveraging their manufacturing capabilities to help with the crisis and manufacturing uh, protective gear for first line, uh, you know, folk, folks, uh, masks, face shields, uh, that type of thing. So um, with that, I wanted to turn things over to Bill and he's gonna tell us about how consumers are feeling and uh, particularly in some uh, specific segments. Thanks, Scott. Um, thank, and hello, everybody. Uh, let me briefly introduce ShareID in case you are not familiar with ShareID um, before we jump into the research. So ShareID is an identity marketing platform uh, we work with hundreds of leading brands to engage and instantly verify consumers that are part of a consumer tribe, like students, teachers, first responders in the military for their personalized offers. And because the offer is just for a group, it reinforces a sense of recognition and belonging that uh, generates a high level of relevancy connection. And these are great ways typically to win new customers, and in this time also demonstrate a sense of support and goodwill um, in the community. So um, like many of you, uh, we have been closely monitoring the consumer sentiment um, in the new environment that we find ourselves in to understand what consumers are specifically looking for from brands and how uh, that will impact their spending uh, patterns and their affinity to certain brands. And there's been some very good research that's been out there um, that really support a couple of key trends that I wanted to touch on real quick. Um, and those are that, you know, in general, people want brands to help um, health workers and other affected populations. There was very strong agreement um, among that point, among number of research reports. Um, they also want brands to focus on how they can solve problems that are tangible and fast, not just broad-based promotions to generate short-term sales. There. And then the last piece was they're really looking for brands and have a lot of trust and faith in brands to provide those solutions to market faster than some of the other institutions that are, are providing support, particularly with um, uh, state, local, and federal government. So this is a great kind of hat tip to brands on what 
uh, consumers are expecting for brands and how they can help uh, support them in the environment that we find ourselves in right now. So we wanted to expand on those findings and find out what consumers in these affected populations, which are pictured here, were looking for from brands. And to find out, we surveyed uh, nearly 2,400 people, 2,399 to be exact, uh, between March 26th and April 2nd in uh, the consumer groups that the coronavirus has impacted disproportionately. These are nurses and first responders that are on the front line of the healthcare crisis, teachers and college students, seniors and military. Combined, um, these group, groups represent 180 million uh, U.S. consumers or about 70% of those uh, consumers over the age of 18. So a very representative uh, group um, in, our, in our community. So let's dive into the research. So the first question that we asked was uh, describe the emotional state that best um, captures how you feel in light of the coronavirus. And in a word, the general mood is one of anxiety. You know, 55% of all respondents said that the pandemic has made them feel more anxious, and that number is even higher for certain populations like nurses at 61% and teachers at 63%. 45% of all respondents also reported feeling frustrated. In particular, college students rated this um, even higher at 53%, which is likely because many had to move home and shift to online learning. And many reported feeling overwhelmed. Consumers want help uh, managing the new environment. This was especially the case for teachers and students as they reset the classroom experience and nurses and first responders as they are providing uh, frontline health support. Surprisingly, seniors were the least overwhelmed at 20%. And this may be because they aren't feeling the financial or employment burdens of the other groups. We also asked positive attributes on how they feel. And as you can expect, uh, those didn't score very well. Uh, what these groups weren't feeling was assured um, less than one in four of all the consumers that we uh, polled felt confident and even less felt unconcerned or resilient. So we then asked, well, how can brands help? So in addition to the options that you see on the slide, we also offer different um, options like extending return times or waiving penalties or fees and using reassuring messaging. And what we found was the top performers were options that provided tangible results. 68% of all respondents said they wanted brands to donate to programs that provide direct support for medical workers. And 67% wanted brands to donate to people who have lost wages. So that is top of mind for them. All the groups also want brands to help prevent infections. More than half of those surveyed uh, wanted brands to explain the measures that they're taking to mitigate the spread of the virus, with seniors in particular at 60% wanting those explanations the most. What makes this even more striking is that survey respondents rated these actions that serve the greater good higher than receiving a personal cost savings, although receiving a discount for their group performed well, with 53% indicating a preference for this option. Um, when compared to the other options. So we wanted to look into this um, a step further. And then we asked uh, consumers directly if they wanted to receive a discount within the next 90 days. And 88% said yes, and 89% said it would positively impact their relationship with the brand. So, you know, examples of brands doing this are surfacing across industries. And Leslie with Fat Fund is going to talk a bit about um, their Healthcare Heroes Bundle. And we've seen other cases in other industries as well, like one of our customers, Headspace, is helping um, with healthcare providers manage their stress through their meditation app, um, which is a great uh, connection between their brand promise on health and wellness and supporting uh, people in the health and wellness community. Consumers in our survey strongly affirm these types of actions. Across all consumer tribes, 98% of survey respondents said they want to hear about promotions that were offered exclusively to people in their profession or life stage. We then asked them, how would a personalized offer make them feel? 
And this data is particularly interesting to consider in light of where I started um, earlier with talking about universal feelings by consumers of feeling anxious and overwhelmed. Our survey revealed that these types of offers provide the kind of care that they want from brands. More than 58% of nurses, first responders, teachers, seniors, and military, in essence, uh, every consumer tribe across the board, said these offers made them feel valued. And um, two-thirds or more said these offers made them feel thankful. So the survey also suggests that these consumers aren't just looking for a great deal. Less than one in three consumers across all tribes said the personalized offers made them feel excited, which is particularly interesting as we polled college students back in February before social, social distancing was the norm. And back in February, which seems like an eon ago, 75% uh, of college students reported feeling excited about receiving an offer. So the impact of these offers is shifting um, from one of excitement for oneself to getting a great deal uh, to being grateful of being thought of and recognized uh, for, uh, by the brand in this time of need. Uh, we then asked them, you know, which kind of offer would be most appealing? And as stated earlier, consumers are looking for tangible value. So more than 60% of all groups said free shipping had the greatest appeal. And that number was even higher for students at 65%, seniors and teachers at 68%. Shipping is clearly top of mind, as everybody is now um, at home. Um, the next two options that scored best were 20% off offers and a free gift. Uh, BOGOs, buy one, get ones, also performed well with nurses at 54% and seniors at 52%. The promotions that didn't appeal to consumers as strongly were just as noteworthy. Less than one third of all respondents wanted upgraded loyalty status and an additional and or, and or additional customer service. And only 26% chose a VIP experience. So when it comes to making consumers feel supported, substance obviously matters in this environment. We then asked, how would an offer of this type impact your relationship with the brand? And we found that overall, 93% said it would positively impact their relationship, with 40% saying they would make a purchase from a brand that they hadn't shopped with before, which performed particularly well with teachers at 44% and nurses at 47%. And 60% said a personalized offer would make them promote that brand to friends and family. Nurses in particular ind indicated a higher likelihood uh, to share the offer at 64%. We then asked how they want to hear about these offers. And in addition to the options on the slide, we also offered options like through social media, through uh, TV or broadcast radio, through the brand's website, direct mail, or uh, referrals from others, uh, other people just like them in their professional life stage. And that was the top performer. The top performer was others just like them with 99% preferring this option, showing the value of word of mouth. And we found um, through other research that these types of offers have a high word of mouth effect as people know other people just like them who would benefit, which helps um, spread the message and um, make your cost of acquisition more efficient. But as far as the channels that you directly control, email is still king of the hill. Um, and this was even true for college students, although SMS did score higher with this group at 27%, was the highest of all, um, and social also performed very well with this group as well. So then lastly, we asked, uh, what are the categories they're most interested in receiving a discount or promotion in the next 90 days? And meal delivery and takeout took the top spot with nearly 60% across the board as people are looking uh, to have meals delivered to their home. Um, beauty and self-care was next in list on the list with 30% indicating interest. And this option performed particularly well with nurses and students with 36% uh, of nurses preferring this option. Apparel also scored well with 30% of all respondents showing interest led by college students and teachers at 37% each. And craft and home improvement came in 
with 25% interest across the board with particular interest from teachers at 34%. So bottom line, uh, consumers are looking to brands for support. They are receptive to uh, these offers that recognize the challenges their consumer group is experiencing. And they are receptive to brands that are providing community support with particular emphasis on health workers and affected populations. So that's uh, the end of my research here. Scott, back over to you. Thanks. So, um, so, so what we're going to do next, um, uh, first, I, I wanted to kind of ask everyone that's listening if they have been, uh, do, uh, you know, in getting involved in uh, special offers or discounts for some of these populations. And then we're going to hear uh, some, you know, examples from both Leslie at FabFitFun and Kathy uh, at uh, Half Price Books around teacher, a teacher appreciation holiday. So uh, for the Q&A, uh, what we're going to do, uh, just to, to remind you how this works, again, you want to look in that upper right and I'm going to start the polling, and then at any point when it's closed, you can go back and you'll see the open and closed polls, and you can look for the closed polls and see the results. So uh, we're going to get started here. Um, the first question, uh, I'm going to start polling it, and this is uh, asking, you know, are you offering special promotions or discounts to teachers? nurses, doctors, law enforcement, military, or other uh, COVID-19 frontline groups. So you guys can all begin voting as soon as you see the questions. So it looks like around a quarter uh, of the folks are doing this so far. Maybe a little bit less. All right, I'm going to close the poll. And now we're going to, I'm going to ask uh, Leslie to uh, tell us a little bit about what they've been doing with uh, their Healthcare Heroes program. Thanks, Scott. So uh, amid this COVID-19 environment that we're living in, uh, we've pivoted a few business practices and added a couple initiatives uh, during this time to serve, you know, not only our community of uh, members that we currently have, but also to those serving us on the front lines uh, during these unprecedented times. So a few ways uh, that we, a few initiatives that we've incorporated are you know, partnering with Share ID uh, to run our Healthcare Heroes initiative, which I'll go into. We also have a content platform called FabFitFun TV. So this typically lives behind our paywall um, and is exclusive content that we've licensed and created exclusively for our members. Um, but what we did was, um, we opened this up and made it available to everyone. So while everyone was sheltering in place, we wanted to make sure that people could access our thousands of um, worked out cooking, self-help and wellness videos that we have in our archives. And then we typically partner with a, a nonprofit um, every single season. So, you know, up to four different charities a year. And we still have um, our current one dress for success, which is doing a lot in this time, but we wanted to add something um, that was especially relevant given the time. So we added No Kid Hungry um, as our spring uh, charity partner. And so what they do is provide meals to, um, you know, children uh, in poverty who don't have access to, to meals. And what they're doing now is focusing, especially on people who, or children who are, um, you know, at risk because they depend on going to school to get their meals. So um, those are just some of the things that we've done um, if you look at the slide, uh, I'll go into what we did with Sheer ID, which was really exciting. So, um, you know, at the onset and, you know, obviously looking at the news and reading news, we see how the people on the front lines, particularly uh, doctors and nurses and, and other people in hospitals are, are putting themselves at risk. So, you know, we across FabFitFun, um, especially our merch team, looked and said, okay, what we have, we're all about 
um, you know, wellness and we have personal hygiene products and that's just a part of our business model. And so we looked at different areas where we could pull inventory and put together a, a self-care bundle that we could offer to nurses and doctors um, during this time. So if you look at the slides um, in the middle there where you see to our healthcare heroes, we created uh, an exclusive landing page um, and then um, that we shared via our social media channel. So that big thank you on Instagram was the post um, that we used uh, as an example to, to uh, launch this initiative. And it was really awesome to partner with Sheer ID because um, they have this, um, this, this great functionality where they can help us uh, verify. So a lot of different companies were doing things like this. We had an existing partnership with Sheer ID. We had worked with them in the past, uh, you know, with a promotion for veterans. And so we went to Sheer ID and asked them what sort of solutions they could help us with. And so they have, uh, through their platform, we were uh, able to easily verify these healthcare workers. Um, so we didn't have to, you know, ask for any sort of personal identifiable, identifiable information and hold that information ourselves. And we put the iframe on the page. Um, and then you see, you could, you, if you're a healthcare worker, you would go and enter your information. Um, once you're verified, a code would pop up that was exclusive to you. Then you would go back to the page, um, enter the code, and that's how you would get your bundle. So that was a really exciting thing that we were able to do that was powered by Sheer ID. Um, moving on, you'll just see, um, we also opened up our FabFitFun TV content. So um, there are some social posts that we did on Instagram as an example. And this is an example of some of the messaging that we've had um, throughout this, this period to, um, speak to the people who are affected and, and open up our membership to um, other people um, on the front lines or sheltering at home who might not know about FabFitFun but wanted to open up our platform so they could get a peek in to see what we're all about. Great. Thanks. I think that's it. Scott, Thank, yeah, thanks, Leslie. Back to you. Um, I wanted to uh, ask Kathy at Half Price Books to talk a little bit about what they're doing or plan to do related to uh, like the upcoming teacher appreciation holiday? Well, okay, thanks, Scott. Um, first of all, we are working with a local hospital here in Dallas, giving books, free books, to some of the different healthcare providers around the Dallas area. So that's a program we're really excited about. But we love our teachers and we have a very um, involved teacher librarian discount program that we've offered and have been supporting teachers for years. So obviously, they're a very good and important group to us. And May 5th is Teacher Appreciation Day. So we are doing a special promotion to basically highlight that group. We're giving them additional discounts, tote bags, anything to make sure the teachers know that we love them and we know they have a tough job. And it was great because we had a teacher call one of our stores last week, and they needed 300 copies of a book for a particular class. And so we were able to work with them individually about getting all the books from all of our different stores and be able to supply them because if they don't have the books for the class, they cannot require that particular title for the students to read. So I think that, you know, anything we can do with our teachers and for our teachers, and then we also have a summer reading program that we um, start launching in May and we sort of move that program up and we go after our teacher mailing list and we highlight, you know, getting teachers, getting students to read um, currently, but also all summer long. So it's a long term promotion we're working with teachers on. Uh, great. So um, I'm going to shift now to our panel discussion and we're going to broaden the conversation around kind of more thinking about messaging and marketing strategically and uh, how that's coming along in your organization. So I wanted to do, before we get into that conversation, I wanted to do a couple instant poll questions. Um, and also I wanna remind everyone, uh, we do have Q&A. Again, if you look in that upper right, you can, you'll see the Q&A area. If there's any questions you wanna ask to the panelists, um, we'll see those and we'll be able to incorporate those into the panel discussion as well. But I wanted to start uh, with the first 
of two more live poll questions. And this is asking, on a scale of five being best and one wing being worst, how effective has your organization uh, slash leadership been in quickly and effectively adjusting marketing messages? Uh, so kind of just thinking as a whole, uh, how well that's coming along. And this is 100% anonymous, so you can answer without any concerns that it'll be shared. So these these results are, are pretty encouraging. I mean, we're seeing that uh, there's a pretty high level of satisfaction. Uh, you know, there's definitely more uh, five and fours than anything else. So I'm glad to see everyone's feeling uh, pretty satisfied and how your organizations are, are making this adjustment, which I am sure is not easy at all. So I'm gonna close this poll and go to the next question. Uh, this is the last question we're going to ask, and this is a even more broader strategic question. Uh, so on a scale of, of, of five to one, five being strongest and, and one being weakest, how would you rate the current level of investment and commitment from leadership uh, to position your brand for success post-pandemic? So are there clear plans? and a demonstration of, of commitment from leadership to uh, build on your strengths during this time. This is also very encouraging. Uh, we're seeing no one's uh, marking very weak, so glad to see we have some, uh, some, some organizations that are forward-looking that are uh, listening in on the webinar. So that's great. Uh, all right, so I think that I'm gonna close this poll. Again, you can always go back to that polls area on the webinar interface and uh, see those and download those later. Um, but I wanna go into our uh, panel discussion and uh, just start very uh, broadly. Whoops, I went ahead a little bit. Uh, so start very broadly and uh, just asking you know, each of the panelists, you know, what, what has been your messaging strategy during uh, this period? How does it differ from pre-COVID? Um, and also, like, help us understand where your existing technology is coming into play here, because I know a lot of uh, digital retailers are taking advantage of things like uh, machine learning or AI to automate messaging and, uh Sometimes it's hard to, you know, uh, let the machines uh, take control, especially in a situation like now where messaging can be very sensitive. Um, but I'll, I'll, Leslie, I'd like to start with you. If you could give us a kind of a high level overview of, of how you've been shifting your messaging, um, in addition to, you know, some of the things that you already told us about with the healthcare heroes. Sure. Thanks. Uh, so, Look, at FabFitFun, our mission has always been to deliver happiness and well-being to everyone everywhere. Um, and that's the message we're always trying to get out through our various marketing channels. Uh, we've consistently used this before and during COVID-19. So, you know, particularly in this time, you know, going back to the research we saw earlier during this time, you know, a lot of people out there are feeling very anxious and overwhelmed. So what we're finding now is that Consumers are really seeking self-care and personal happiness and really leaning into um, the product that we're offering, which is really awesome. Um, you know, I, I already went into some of the business practices that we've done, but I think for us, it's, it's, it's mostly about just meeting consumers where, we, where they are and, and being extremely authentic, right? So the good news for us is that our messaging is, is really on point. Like I said, we have, we're always about happiness, well-being, self-care. These are, these are messages that we're always trying to get across. And um, what's been nice is that, um, you know, we can lean into this even more. And I think just from an execution standpoint, it's just looking at everything that's going out and making sure that, you know, you have that eye on it and making sure it's more making sure that things, you know, make sense. <laughs> um, so even going into, you know, summer and thinking we ship products to people, um, 
you know, are people going to be out this summer in the same way that they've been out in the past, right? And like, how do you change that? And how do you take what you have existing and make sure it's, it's still relevant? But um, on a human to human level, it's really been leaning into the values that we've we've always had. Kathy, can you help us, you know, give us a, a quick overview as well from Half Price Books? Well, I think, you know, obviously we are sending more coupons and promoting different programs that we have for the different stores. But basically our curbside pickup has um, really exploded across the country. And what we've had to work very hard at is each of the different counties and cities, the laws are different. And they literally change every week where one um, city you could do curbside to, um, pick up, but then the next week the governor decides that we're not essential business, so we can't. So our messaging is very, very, uh, we have to stay very current with it, and we're constantly tweaking and targeting each of our emails depending on the city we're in and how we're promoting it and when to start it again and when we have to stop it. So I think being fluid and available has been one of the best things that we're able to do. And frankly, your employees. Uh, we're listening to our district managers and regional managers. We're having, you know, three times a week meeting with them because we want to know what's happening in that city so we can address the concerns of that particular market. Because I think that's when, you know, we are selling more puzzles and we're selling more stuff to teachers. But then, you know, we're also selling a lot of self-help books because there's a lot of people out of work. So we're kind of mar marketing different messages depending on what's happening in that particular area of the country. And, and maybe just a little bit to follow up on that, Kathy, um, you know, kind of going back to that, one of the live poll questions on, uh, you know, how effective organizations have been at making the adjustment to marketing messaging. Is there anything you can share? I mean, we saw in the, in the poll that, um, you know, folks are feeling like, you know, organizations have done a pretty good job of making that adjustment. Is there anything you can share um, of what's worked in particular um, at Half Price Books uh, of kind of yeah. getting everybody to kind of sing from the, the same songbook? Well, I think that, I mean, we've, we've introduced some grab bag programs where all of a sudden, you know, the stores are very much involved and they're putting boxes of uh, mysteries together and children's books and we're selling them in a box and it's been great because they can go by a store or order online a grab bag so that is something that our stores have had a lot of fun with and are actually stepping up and doing it i think that uh we are you know committed to reacting to the marketplace and wondering how we can do more to actually meet the needs of these different um, the different groups that are out there and the different um, customers. And I think that we have done, um, we launched a program literally in two days where you can, a customer can drive up to our store and go to our website and search the inventory for that particular store. And I know that that doesn't seem like a very revolutionary thing for a lot of retailers, but we sell 50% of our merchandise to 60% are used books. So we get them from the customers. So the inventory is kind of constantly changing and we're constantly adding inventory and deleting inventory. So each of our stores inventory is very unique to that location. So we're able to launch that quickly. People can sit outside of their car, sit outside in their car, pull up our website, know every item that's in that store and be able to just call and say, okay, I need that James Patterson book, or I like the puzzle with the picture of the balloons on it, and give us your credit card, and we'll stick it out on the on the curb. So it's really um, it's really great the way our employees have stepped up, and basically how technology has helped that happen. So we're we're I having this. That's a good. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, no, Leslie. Sorry, Leslie. No, I was just gonna. It it was really interesting listening to Kathy talk because. It reminds me of, you know, an offline behavior that I'm also seeing online at Fab Fit Fun, which is people really want to treat themselves to something right now, um, treat themselves to something that brings home, you know, self-care or happiness or joy. And, you know, whether that can be a self-care book or 
um, you know, puzzles and whatnot, we're seeing the so same sort of behavior online. We have a similar concept of, you know, these bundles. I talked about the healthcare bundles, but, you know, a similar sort of online concept where we put together these mystery self-care bundles for our members as well. And people are grabbing those up and just wanting to, you know, get a, get a spot of happiness in their lives, I think. So I'd like to dig a little bit deeper into, you know, this, this idea of kind of what you're, what you're hearing from your customers, the sentiment from them. And obviously, when you're thinking about being an effective communicator and the marketing messages, you really need to have your finger on the pulse of your customer. And we saw some great kind of high level data that Bill shared across uh, many other, you know, consumers of multiple brands. But, um, you know, you need to really understand your particular uh, your particular customer. And I'd be interested to hear Leslie and then Kathy a little bit about, you know, what are the processes that you're using to make sure that you, uh, you are collecting that customer sentiment, that you do have a really good feel for um, what your customer is going through and, and what they're feeling and, and how they're, you know, how they want to interact with you. You know, is yeah, that, great yeah, through mm -hmm. social media, through customer service reps that are having conversations and, you know, what, interested to hear where you're, where, where that data uh, and, and information is coming from and what processes you're using. Yeah, um, happy to answer that. So, um, look, we definitely look at customer sentiment all the time. So it starts, you know, through our social and customer service channels. Um, and we also have our online community forum, which is such a special aspect of our business. We consult our community for feedback and honest dialogue for our members daily. And it's, it's funny, our co-founder Katie often says that our community, um, which is the social platform for our members um, that lives behind the paywall, is our fourth co-founder. And so, you know, a lot of the data that Bill shared is, is really in line with what we're seeing, too. But as things sort of started to devolve <laughs> into our, our current normal. I mean, I think we were just as nervous as some of the other retailers out there too. You know, we have a product, we were able to sell it, but will would customers want to buy what we're selling? Would it seem insensitive to, you know, offer discounts or what did, what did they want to see? But a lot of the early indicators we got were um, through social love, proactive social love that we got through people um, on social media. So I'm thinking of tweets that came in that said, oh my gosh, I'm so happy for Fab to Sun. And people would send us pictures, um, you know, of them sitting in their bathtub with like face masks and towels on their head and, and show us the way that they're coping, you know, during this not normal time. Um, to people saying how they were at other online retailers and, you know, had such a huge basket size. They, you know, quote unquote, finally caved and decided to try Fabs at Fun and they were really excited to get their box. So, you know, that was a great leading indicator that people were, were liking and reacting to what we were doing. So um, we, we continued that. And then we've always had through our, our online forum, our community, um, you know, a great dialogue with our members. You know, when they're happy, they let us know. And when they're not happy, they let us know too. Um, so not only is the community invaluable for the feedback it provides us um, on our business, but it allows our members to connect with us and um, with each other too. So we found that there was a lot of communication between our members um, during this time of social distancing um, where people were alone and potentially feeling lonely or, or needed to, to get out. So it's been great to also jump into those conversations. And we oftentimes just ask members, you know, what they want to see. We've seen things from, you know, members creating online talent shows to participating in our FabFitFun book club and, we react and change our content strategy by creating content that helps feed, you know, what we're seeing as a need out there. And uh, Kathy, anything you want to add on, on how you're assessing customer sentiment? Well, I think that, I mean, obviously we're using social media and social media has been always valuable because our customers actually absolutely love us. So they respond very favorably on social media, but we have had a lot of, you know, um, success with just our customers calling our stores and have 
at that personal connection. We have had employees go and use their phone, videotape a bookshelf or a shelf of puzzles and talking to the customer and saying, oh, I want that pic- that puzzle or I want that book. They've been really great of it. And I think that that sort of pers- anything you can do personal touching at this time is very important. We've had a lot of, uh, we've had one particular law student in one of our cities that she, the library was closed and she called one of our stores and our employee went and found the book she was reading that she needed, read the quote to her about what she needed for one of her classes because she couldn't get the book quick enough and they didn't have curbside in that, that particular city. And our the customer was great because she did a big shout out to Susan who was like went above and beyond. So I think it's an opportunity to highlight your employees as much as your company because your employees are your company. And I think that that kind of connection, anything you can do to promote your employees and their resources. I mean, we've had employees that have used their children to post um, YouTube videos of putting together kits you know, just building building bridges and these different kits that are available from our stores. We've had employees posting on their personal Facebook pages, pictures of them in the store and promoting different products that we carry. And so we've had a lot of great guerrilla marketing, just basic, you know, um, that different employees and people are trying, which we absolutely love seeing that excitement. And I think that is very genuine and it's not something from coming from corporate. It's very, um, it's very individually city centric, which we really like about that. Yeah, it's 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 great to hear how you're able to, uh, you know, those all of those employees are able to be such great contributors to the organization. Um, there was a specific question for uh, for Bill at Sheer ID. Doug Jensen wanted to know how you verify healthcare worker status. Uh, Bill, could you could you explain that? Sure, of course. Yeah, we have um, authoritative data sources that we work with. There's actually 9,000 different authoritative data sources that we have collected and are data partners of ours uh, that we have access to so that um, in the case where uh, we need to verify status of somebody, a group like nurses, we can work with those data sources. An example might be like the ANA, the American Nurses Association, um, that Um, provides us with an access uh, to their source. And basically what happens there is uh, when we get the request in from the form, uh, we, as Leslie pointed out, you know, there's a couple of, uh, a few pieces of information that's required there. We capture that. We do a quick uh, lookup and ping uh, to the data source to see if there's an active record there. And if there is an active record, um, fantastic. Then we provide a, um, a, a, uh, a true value to that record and pass that on to the reward code. And if we don't have an active record, um, that's immediately accessible. And that can be, you know, a number of different reasons. Maybe they just type their name, maybe they're using a different name. Uh, we also have a document review process in place so that uh, uh, we somebody can upload a document um, and our, we have document reviewers standing by that can verify that in just a, a matter of, in some cases, usually a matter of seconds, sometimes a, a couple of minutes. Great. Thank you for explaining that. Um, I wanted to talk about discounts. That's been something that came up in, uh, in Bill's presentation. And I think pre-COVID, um, it, you know, it was essentially, a, you know, it's, it's kind of a dirty word in, in retail and, and with brands and, um, it's referred to as an addiction, um, uh, other negative connotations uh, like that, and these concerns that once you begin discounting, the your customers are going to you know forever expect it. There's impact it have on the brand, um, but you know we're in a different period, um, and I wanted to kind of hear your point of view of, uh, and maybe beginning with you, Leslie, of you know wh- where. You know, as a brand, um, have you been discounting, and um, and how has that ch- you know pre-COVID, and and how has that changed now, and how did you come to some of the decisions about you know how you were going to you know either maintain or be more or less you know promotional or discounting? Yeah, so um, we haven't. 
in, we, I, I would say we haven't added any incremental discounts. Um, fortunately, we, we haven't had to. I think, um, I think everything that you said about discounting in general is, is I totally agree with it. And it's, I'm very weary of discounts. And so we have been very steady at holding the line without, without having to do additional discounts. That being said, I will say, <laughs> not to use the dirty word discount, I'll say value. Um, value is, is definitely one of our value props within the company. And so, you know, our, our, our ongoing marketing tagline across everything, um, you know, pre-COVID, during COVID, post-COVID, um, you know, obviously we test different things, but it's, you know, $49.99 for over $200 worth of amazing products. And so... I'm finding that that value messaging that's always been there is resonating with people even more. And then even um, in our e-commerce, you know, flash sales that we do, there's always a heavy, again, I won't call it discounting, but there's a heavy value component. That's why it's behind the paywall and you have to be a member to access those prices. So we've found that, you know, I think it's a comparative thing that we haven't had to lean any more into that because what we already do is resonating like that tweet, example I shared earlier, someone saying, you know, I was at another awesome retailer, but, you know, whether or not they were discounting, it's just still not the same as Fab but Fun, and you already get so much value, and I think, you know, because we offer such an array of, of products that people can kind of try, they're, they're just, I found them to be very open to that, and the messaging that I'm seeing in our community, across social, and, you know, through our CX agents are that, People are just excited to try new things and they're a little bit bored at home. And so FabFitFun can, can offer a bright spot there. So no incremental discounting yet. But we are, you know, monitoring things like retention. And I think that's the other side of it, right? So we are a subscription business and, you know, we, I, I'm grateful for everybody who's signing up. But we're, we're monitoring all our KPIs. You know, discounting is definitely a lever that we have pulled in the past we we try not to it's not part of our typical marketing mix um but we'll be looking at retention with a close eye and, and hopefully able to keep these members um you know in the ongoing months you know post-covid as well and bill i'm interested to hear your point of view i mean i you must be in conversations debating discounting working with your id clients on a regular basis and You've probably been hearing what the you know what those conversations were before COVID and what they have been now. Um, and I would also share one other piece of data uh, from our survey. It, you know, we've seen this when we look at the merchants that are the higher performers that are more ahead of plan and ask them, you know, why do you think that's you know what are the biggest contributing factors? you know, aggressive discounting and promotions is the number one factor um, for them, you know, that's driving that. So, uh, you know, again, it's, you know, in many situations, it's not ideal, but um, often it can drive, uh, it can drive volume. Uh, but Bill, I'm interested, you know, what, what have you been hearing about um, discounts and what are the kind of conversations that you've been a part of related to that? Yeah, sure. So, you know, what we, what we've been recommending, and typically what we what we have when um, brands are coming to us is they want to do focus promotions um, to a specific population. So, uh, you know, broad-based discounts are something that, uh, you know, we typically don't recommend because of the fact that you, it's, uh, you can erode uh, your brand and your kind of and overall margin in general. And um, that's where brands are coming to us to provide a focused uh, discount or promotion or offer uh, to a specific population. And what we've seen here recently is really a shift in who that uh, offer is going to. So in, in the past, um, that may, we had, you know, an inordinate amount of focus on the student population. And clearly that population is still of a population that's in need. But what we're seeing is that shift moving towards nurses, doctors, and first responders as uh, people overall are recognizing that that's a group and population that um, needs support and they want to support them in um, general. Um, there's a lot of goodwill that is associated along with recognizing those groups. Um, and so there's you know a dual benefit there from uh, uh, corporate goodwill that gets established as well as 
uh, the opportunity to start a new customer relationship that are that is in that population. And because you are just uh, uh, targeting that group um, and you're protecting the offer, in this case, with verification to make sure that it's just going to that group, you have um, the ability of getting some of those benefits around new customers, goodwill, but not the margin erosion that you might see from uh, broad-based discounting. Great. So uh, we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Uh, we still could take one from uh, some of the listeners if you want to enter those uh, through the webinar interface. But I uh, wanted to kind of move on to, you know, maybe like a good way to begin wrapping up the conversation. Um, and that's, you know, referring, you know, I, I, I mentioned kind of the beginning of the webinar, the um, strong brands come out of these kind of situations much more quickly. Um, we got some instant poll uh, input as well on kind of how everyone's feeling about the current like level of investment and commitment to uh, positioning your brand for success after the uh, the pandemic. Um, but I, you know, I wanted to ask the question of the panel. You know, what are your thoughts on? Um, looking at this as a time to invest in the in your brand, in your customer experience, um, as a way to uh, you know now at the, at this moment, um, so that when things do resume, you'll be in a better position to to kind of come out of it and be stronger and uh, and be a good performer. So, uh, Kathy, do you want to start with that and help help us understand your point of view there? Well, I think that, I mean, there's obviously we're all trying to figure out what's going to happen at the end of all of this, if it ever ends. But, you know, we have an opportunity, we think, right now, because Amazon is, you know, really um, there. We've been competing with them for books since they started because they started selling books online. And they are, you know, providing essential items currently for um people and so we think and the book community in the industry thinks that there's an opportunity to go after that and that people want to um, shop local and they want to shop smaller retailers and this is an opportunity for us to capitalize on it and we have noticed that we have noticed it we've actually gone after some discounts with some of that i think that we are going to come stronger at the end of this, we will be stronger, and I think more people are turning to, well, turning to us for books where they used to turn to Amazon. So we're capitalizing on some competition that, you know, is kind of interested in other areas right now. And I think that that is something that people have to be aware of, just as we marketers. There are, everyone's searching online, but you know, there is a lot of competition out there. And any, any way that you can position your brand a little better and a little different and a little bit more positive, then you need to be doing it. And it's tough because every, you're being told by your CFO to cut budgets. And that's why we've started up some basic good old-fashioned guerrilla marketing. But we are, you know, we haven't cut all of our budget because we know that we this is a great time to build customers because so many of them are at home for our website. Leslie, how about you? Yeah, um, thanks for that, Kathy. Look, I think this is so personal to each brand, but I do think that brand will continue to be invested in and evolved. You know, COVID will be a part of every human story going forward and will be integrated in the way we speak to consumers. And I think that, you know, what we're finding is that people want to know who we are and, you know, what we stand for as a brand. And in my opinion, I think that coming out of this, that will be, more important as ever. So I think consistent themes that I've heard here are just, you know, speaking to your consumers, thinking, listening to them, most of all, um, you know, finding ways like our healthcare heroes or, you know, all of the curbside pivots that Kathy's made to, to meet them where they are. And so, you know, we've had, you know, continual pivots in our business model through this. So, you know, we heard that our members, that they were shopping and it was bringing them joy they were sharing with us some of the products that they were having trouble finding. And so we looked and we, we looked as we were merching the sales and we, you know, looking back at our plans and saying, what else can we do? What else can we add? What other sorts of, you know, shop and shops can we, can we um, facilitate to give them more of the products that they need? And I think that's really resonating. So coming out of this, I hope that our customers will see that 
when they spoke, we listened and we did everything in our power to, you know, bring them what they needed. Great. And, uh, and Bill, why don't we uh, let you have the final word here uh, on this question? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, thanks. And I, I would just, you know, I'd echo what Leslie and Kathy said. I think uh, this is, it's interesting, you know, we, this is a very interesting time where everybody is having a very similar moment and we're all focused on the same thing. And I think because of that, there's a ton of energy and focus on uh, on that very, very uh, track. And we're hearing very directly from consumers that they're looking for support. Um, they're looking for um, brands that are a- helping them uh, get the little things and the necessary things on in their lives. And those can be simple indulgences like um, – uh, like Leslie was talking about with uh, um, with uh, the the health and wellness uh, bundles that they have, and then it can also be things like educational resources, like what Kathy was talking about for teachers. And um, when brands are aligned on um, supporting their purpose and aligning with those populations that are lining up for that purpose and doing it well, I think that's when you see the acceleration that comes out of that that you showed in your graph where brands can come out stronger out of these things and that's what i'm looking forward to well i want to thank our panelists again uh bill leslie and kathy for uh spending some time and sharing your insights with our community uh it's especially important during times when we're in uncharted territory and we all need to learn from one another and and that's what's great about these kind of communities so thank you all so much for uh being a part of this and contributing your your thoughts and your ideas um again i want to uh remind everyone commerce next has a resource center where we house uh our research uh data from other sources uh, upcoming webinars, replays of past webinars. It's commercenext.com slash COVID. Uh, and then it, the last couple of slides on this deck are some areas where you can help. Um, we've talked about these um, in some of the past, but certainly take a look at those. Uh, I think there, we're all eager to find different ways where we can contribute and help the situation. But uh, thank you again, everyone, for, uh, for listening. And we look forward to seeing you uh, again on April 22nd, uh, where we have a webinar that's going to look at business continuity. Have a great rest of the day, and uh, we look forward to seeing you.